14, you know, NOAA's Climate Prediction Center released its outlook yep. for oh. winter. Yes, <laughs> it is on, I was going to say on the corner. That's not what I'm trying to say. Around the corner. It Marcus is. Bailey is here to, to break all of it down for us. Okay, so let's talk about La Nina. Yes. We hear these words. We don't know what it means meteorologically. So right. what does it mean? Yeah, fancy words uh, meaning one simple thing, and it is what the temperature is in the Pacific Ocean. People are like, what in the world does temperatures in the Pacific Ocean have anything to do with central India? Right. It plays a huge role globally on a, on a very large scale, okay? So you think about two years ago, El Nino was right. the big word, Spanish right? for the Nino. The Nino, is <laughs> yes. Chris, Chris, Chris Farley was made very popular on Saturday <laughs> Night Live. rest his soul. Yes, but El Nino is warm water in the Pacific, warmer than normal, La Nina's opposite. It is colder okay. than normal. I do have a graphic to kind of show you here to kind of explain that on the weather All computer, right. but that's kind of the, the gist of it. You can see the cooler water, the blue, kind of hugging up against Central America and South America. America. And it plays a huge role then, essentially, on not just what happens here in the Midwest, but globally as well. What does it have to do with winter weather specifically? Okay, so let me go ahead and flip the graphic here for you. Uh, this is kind of a crude graphic. This comes from the National Weather Service. But what it does is it dictates where some of the temperatures are at, but even more important than that, the jet stream. And that will allow, one, for where the cold air, the warm air kind of sets up. Two, oh, yeah. where the storm tracks mm. actually go. Um, and that usually, not every time, and there are other mitigating factors when you come into a La Nina year, but usually means a more active storm pattern for the Midwest. Okay, so, so do we us. mean active in terms of snow, active in terms of rain? That's the question, right? Yeah, and that's gonna be kind of the big question this year. So let's go to what their official outlook is. You can see the areas in orange is warmer than expected, or warmer oh. than average. Well, we're just right on the line. Kind of on the border. But that makes it so easy for you, <laughs> well, <laughs> Storm Track 18. Well, here's the deceiving thing, okay? The areas that are in gray, the neutral, if you will. Yeah. Basically, what it says is it doesn't mean we're going to be average. It means that we have an equal chance of being at average, above average, or oh. below average. Oh, okay? so they this just threw a dart <laughs> yes. for Indianapolis. Yeah, right. Here's the important oh. thing here, and my colors got all kind of messed up, unfortunately, but... We're in that green area, okay. which means wetter than average, and it's actually a higher probability of wetter than average. Oh, so here's wow, the thing. Wow. It means that we're probably going to have a more stormy outlook. Now, that could mean rain. It could mean a mix. It could mean snow. S sleet. It could, yeah, a little bit rain. of everything. And then you have that chance for warmer air. So a lot of it's going to depend on is the colder air going to match up with the, the, the preset that rolls through. Here's the bottom line, ladies. We've had not just below average snowfall the past yeah. couple of years, it's been extremely We're due. below average. We're due. If you go by statistics, <laughs> which I love going by statistics, you know, we average around 26 inches of snow. That is the In normal the for Indianapolis. Okay. Yes, that's right. Uh, when you get into kind of a pattern like this, what we may anticipate with La Nina, it could open the door that we at least get closer to average snowfall. Okay. So something to look look toward. Can I just tell you that sure. I, I realize you guys get in graphics and, uh -huh. and maps and things like that all the time, but thank you for making that simple to understand. Yes. Well, and here's I mean, the... Because yep. truly, I, mean, that, that's, I know it's your job, but and you did a nice the, job. Here's the key takeaway. It's hard enough to forecast eight days that we do here <laughs> yeah. on a daily basis. Yes. You're talking about a three-month span, December, January, and February. So take this with a grain of salt because, you know, a lot can change. You know, especially when it comes, we all sure. know with snow forecasts and stuff like that. But we do think there's the potential for maybe a little bit more activity. So hopefully, if you're a snow lover, we get under some of those good snow bands. We Sometimes. still have fall to enjoy. Yes, yeah. we do. Well, actually, we have summer to enjoy for the next That's couple of days. That's a good point. Right? Yeah. Yes, it's been beautiful. Soak up the 70s while you can. And you know it's not going to last. Yeah. Uh, and we do have some changes to talk about in the eight-day forecast. So let's go ahead and get to it here. Uh, 